ISLM in an open economy. Here we fit the foreign trade into the ISLM framework. We assume that price level is given. The introduction of trade modifies the analysis of aggregate demand. We start from the familiar and basic level of the ISLM model. Spending on domestic goods. In an open economy, a part of domestic output is sold to foreigners, which are called exports, denoted as X. And a part of spending is used to purchase foreign goods, which are called imports, denoted as Q. We have to modify the IS curve accordingly. Domestic spending and spending on domestic goods. There is a slight difference between these two important concepts. Let us look at what is domestic spending. Domestic spending includes three important components. Consumption denoted as C, investment denoted as I, and government expenditure denoted IG. D as is equal to C plus I plus G. This is nothing but aggregate demand in a closed economy. Spending on domestic goods. Spending on domestic goods includes net export also. That means spending on domestic goods is equal to domestic spending plus net export. Net export denoted as NX is the difference between export X and import Q. So we can write spending on domestic goods as C plus I plus G plus X minus Q or C plus I plus G plus NX. We assume that domestic spending DS depends on the rate of interest and the domestic income y ds is a, is a function of domestic income y and interest rate i net exports or nx net exports or nx is the excess of exports over imports net exports depend on the following three factors domestic income y foreign income yf and real exchange rate r Exports depend on foreign income Y, F and real exchange rate R. Export is a function of EX in bracket Y, F and R. As foreign income rises, exports also rise and vice versa. A rise in real exchange rate or real depreciation of the value of home currency increases the demand for domestic goods. Imports depend on two important variables, domestic income Y and real exchange rate R. Q is a function of Q, Y, R. As domestic income Y rises, imports also rise and vice versa. A rise in real exchange rate R or a real depreciation of the value of home currency decreases the imports. We can write net export as the difference between X and Q and Net export NX is equal to instead of X, we write X bracket YFR. That means X is a function of foreign income and real exchange rate R minus instead of Q, we write Q in bracket YR. That means import is a function of domestic income Y and real exchange rate R. And in total, we write NX net export as a function of foreign income YF, domestic income Y and the real exchange rate R. We can state three important results. A rise in foreign income improves the home country's trade balance and therefore raises the home country's aggregate demand. A real depreciation of the currency of the home country improves the trade balance of the home country and therefore raises its aggregate demand. A rise in home country income raises its imports and therefore worsens its balance of trade. Goods market equilibrium. The increase in import demand caused by dollar one increase in income is known as marginal propensity to import. Or the marginal propensity to import measures the fraction of an extra dollar of income spent on imports. Since people spend a fraction of their income on imports rather than on domestic goods, the IS curve will be steeper than it would be in a closed economy. Open economy IS curve. The open economy IS curve includes exports as a part of aggregate demand. 
it can be written as is car is equal to ds that is domestic spending as a function of as a function of y and i plus nx as a function of foreign income y of domestic income y and real exchange rate r now we have to explain how the changes in foreign income and real exchange rate affect the equilibrium level of income the following figure shows the effect of a rise in foreign income in an open economy let us look at this figure there are two is cars and one lm car we never change the lm car because we keep money supply and price level constant e is the first equilibrium point where is car intersects lm car giving you the level of output by zero and when a net export increases either because of an increase in foreign income or because of a depreciation in the home country's currency value, then IS curve will be shifted from IS to IS dash. Now the equilibrium point has been moved from E to E dash, giving a higher level of output Y1. It does mean that as a result of shift of the IS curve to the rightward direction due to the, due to the increase in net export or due to an increase in net, net export on account of depreciation of the home country's value, the level of output has been raised. And along with that, there has been an increase in the level of rate of interest as well. The higher foreign spending on domestic goods raises the level of income. This can be shown as a rightward shift of the IS curve. The full effect of an increase in foreign income raises the raises both the level of income and interest rate in the domestic economy conversely a weakening of foreign income reduces the home country's aggregate demand equilibrium income at home would fall as would the rate of interest the above figure can also help explain the effect of a real depreciation a real depreciation raises net exports and therefore shifts the is curve to the right increasing the level of income in the economy now we come to the last part of our discussion that is repercussion effects. In an interdependent world, our policy changes affect other countries as well as ourselves and then feed back to our economy. When we increase government spending, our income rises. A part of increase in income will be spent on imports, which means the income will raise in a broad too. The increase in foreign income will then raise the foreign demand for goods which in turn adds to the domestic income expansion brought about by higher level of government spending and so on. These are called repercussion effects.